What is up, Stockton, California? This is 93.5 KWDC Delta College Radio, and I'm your girl, Carolita. And this is your boy, Choi. We got the mayor leaking up in the building. What's up? What's up, 209? <laughs> we out of here. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Stockton? You're listening to 209 Talk on 93.5 KWDC Stockton. 209 Talk is a collaboration where local college students sit down with the mayor. The show you are tuned into right now has been put together by students enrolled in the broadcasting courses in the digital media department at San Joaquin Delta College. Thanks for listening and supporting College Radio. This week we are talking about public safety. And I'm your girl Carolita and I got Choi right here. Yo, Choi. And, and Mayor Lincoln. What's happening everyone? So the first thing we want to ask is what is public safety? Yeah, well, first of all, public safety is probably one of the most, if not the most important topics uh, of every resident in, in any city. Um, and oftentimes when we think about public safety, we think it from a lens of, of crime only. Mm -hmm. um, but in reality, public safety has to do with a lot more than that. Uh, for example, more recently, the city of Stockton, we experienced um, a natural disaster type of crisis. Uh, with the one to 200 year storm that we just went through um, at the beginning of, of this year. Um, and so that's just one of many things. Also, public safety has to do with public health um, throughout our community. And so that's one of the things I always try to make sure that the public understands is that uh, where we have an obligation to ensure that our, our residents are safe, that they understand the totality of public safety and how that might impact their community. You bring up the storms. What uh, what did your office do to help combat the storms, that the flooding and all that going around Stockton? Yeah, so when a natural disaster like that occurs uh, in the city of Stockton, uh, we, we activate our emergency operations center. Um, and my team uh, is primarily responsible for just getting information mm -hmm. uh, out to the public uh, so that they understand uh, where they can go um, and, and pick up sandbags or where uh, evacuation and warming centers are located throughout the community should uh, that need to occur for, you know, in their neighborhood. So any type of information that we have that uh, is pertinent to the, to the public, we want to get that out there to them. But we also want to reach people uh, right where they are. And we understand that, you know, Stockton is the number one diverse city in the nation. And so there are several different languages um, that we have to make sure that we uh, translate that information to into so that uh, people can can get the information that they need. Right. Um, you said you bring up the warming stations. Are those when is warming stations? And I know you do cooling stations, too. Is that across the board of Stockton or is it only certain places? That's across the board. Across Stockton. the board. So there's multiple areas. Absolutely. Because we have community centers all throughout the city. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we activate those community centers uh, in the summer as cooling centers, uh, in the winter as warming centers. Can anybody go there, or is it like a certain demographic? Like, demographic, right. Anybody can go go there. The beautiful thing about the city community centers is that they're open to the entire public. Why should we prioritize safety in this community? Well, safety is is top of, top of the list, right? Mm -hmm. It's top of mind for, for everyone. And when we think about the vision of the city of our Stock, uh, the city of Stockton, his vision is that Stockton will be the best city in America to live, raise a family, and grow a business. If we're not focusing and prioritizing public safety, then we're not going to be able to meet those objectives. And and that's what's that's what's important. That's why public safety has to be, um, and should always be a top priority for our community. What efforts can Stocktonians take to improve the safety of Stockton? I like to say safety, public safety, is a shared responsibility. Uh -huh. uh, the, the, the residents of Stockton shouldn't just look to uh, the city or law enforcement or our fire department or anyone or our public safety agencies uh, for the solutions. Um, public safety, we as a community, we have to take ownership mm -hmm. uh, of, of our surroundings. We take ownership of our house, our own house. Uh, we take over ownership of our neighborhoods. Uh, and so if there's any information that the public has, 
um, it's important if they see something that they say something yeah. um, because they're not only protecting you know themselves but they're tech protecting those uh, uh, around them I, I, I wanted to say something real quick like Stocktonians like we are really proud of being from Stockton right and I, I think this goes for citywide like anytime we're out of town people ask us hey where you from Stockton like, we say it with pride right so like um, what can what can how can our community feel more uh, like more uh, feel like having you know I think I think I'm getting a twisted here but like how can we be more uh, uh, invested in our community you know because we know that your office does a lot right and so how can the community be more invested take more action invest back into the community yeah yeah and take ownership yes. from a public safety mm -hmm. standpoint, exactly right mm -hmm. Um, so there is this uh, beautiful thing called an app that the city of Stockton has. It's called the Ask Stockton uh, app. Everybody has a cell phone. Mm -hmm. you know, almost everybody has a cell phone, a smartphone. Um, it has the ability to download this app in their, their Google Store or uh, their Apple Store. So it's important that we download the app because... When we were talking about and describing public safety earlier, you know, there's different elements, right? There's like traffic mm -hmm. safety. Um, you know, there's, uh, and with that, there's potholes, right, throughout the city. Um, the, there's speeding that takes place throughout the city. Uh, there are abandoned vehicles. Um, there are certain areas that have uh, blight throughout the community. And so all these have public safety impacts. But with that app, uh, what you what our residents can do is they can essentially create a work order for the city of Stockton. It's simple. They just take a picture of it. Um, they submit the request, maybe a brief explanation, and the city has to respond, mm. right? And, and so imagine if, you know, of a city of 322,000 people, if 200 of those or 150,000 people were taking ownership through that app in in if they see something in the community that they reported to the city of Stockton, and then that way we can we can address it. Because at the end of the day, we want um, uh, to we want to beautify our city, yeah. right? Um, just like our our homes, our house, our yards. We want to take care of you know what we own. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, we all have a stake in the city, and so this is an opportunity for us to exercise our voice mm -hmm. through action uh, for the betterment of our community. I think it's speaking on what you're saying, like call in people who can take a picture and send it in. I that for some reason it made me think of all the fires that go around during summer. So do you guys, if we took a picture of like grass that's growing that looks overgrown, and overgrown dry and, and dry, yeah. could we take a picture of that as well? Absolutely. Okay, because <laughs> that's da the most dangerous thing. I've so seen. basically, you could take a picture of anything that could pose potential risk and harm. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. For some reason, I don't know why that's it's just fire. I, I think that's dope, though. I think I, right. not a lot of people know. Do a lot of people know about that? A lot that? of people don't know about it. Do you know the percentage of how many Stocktonians are on that? I don't know the no? percentage. We could find. We could look into that. Mm -hmm. I don't know the percentage, but everywhere I go and whoever you know, when I talk to groups, uh, they have like an aha moment because mm -hmm. they, they didn't I'm, realize I'm that. Aha, any, right? I'm having an aha <laughs> moment right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually very cool. So we want to get into the deep part of this conversation. That's crime in Stockton. So like a big thing, there's a lot of misleading stuff that goes on with the crime in Stockton. Like they say it's the most dangerous city in the United States, all this stuff. What do you think that, what do you think the most important is the most misleading about Stockton? If that makes sense. That question was kind of off. <laughs> what do you think is like what do you want to combat when it comes to the misleading or <clears throat> like I think what maybe what you're talking about is like the the stereotypes the that, stereotypes that, that come out Stock, of stockton stockton have right yeah or like being, the most being the most crime ridden right because when the people dangerous. think about stockton is first thing is violence right and so what do you think about that that stereotype of stockton I don't accept it mm -hmm. because that's a narrative about our city, and that narrative doesn't define um, who we are as Stocktonians. Uh, that narrative typically comes from the outside in for the city. 
uh, anybody who lives in this city, yeah, we know we deal with crime, we deal with violence. Uh, it's no different than any other community throughout the nation. Um, in fact, communities that have similar sized population have two or three times the law enforcement presence um, and two or three times, if not more, the amount of crime and violence and, and homicides in their communities, right? Um, and so that's a narrative. So what we have to do is we, we have to begin to champion the positive things, um, not only as our community as a whole, but the great work that we're doing as a city um, when it comes to uh, mitigating and reducing uh, crime and, and violence. Because um, we're doing some very innovative work um, through our intervention strategies, through our Office of Violence you know, Preventions, uh, partnering with our community-based organizations uh, who operate you know, in, in that space uh, as it relates to uh, more trauma-informed uh, methods you know, as we deal with and navigate you know, and respond to different types of crimes and homicides that have impacted our community. Because what we realize is when when, when violence occurs in a particular community, it de just doesn't impact that particular uh, individual or those individuals or their family. It impacts an entire surrounding community. So there's, there's trauma there. So we have to continue our work in the city of Stockton to make sure that we're engaging those communities. We're making sure that those communities have the res access to the resources or even just aware of the resources that are available to them to help them take the next step, you know, toward healing and whatever that situation may have been. Uh, I totally agree. Um, there was one thing, there was a uh, phrase you said, um, trauma-informed method, methods, right? Um, for those who are listening uh, who may not know what that is, can you expound a little bit on that? Yeah, we all deal with a certain level of trauma in, in, in our life based off of our our, our upbringing or mm -hmm. what we've been exposed to. Um, there's a term called uh, ACEs, mm -hmm. right? Uh, adverse childhood experiences uh, that help us identify, you know, what type of trauma that has impacted us. And so, you know, witnessing crime and, and violence is, is one of those ACEs. Yes. And so it's important that, you know, as a community, you know, in partnership, with our community-based community based organizations, because we could, the city of Stockton could not do it, what we do, the great work we do without the strength of our community-based organizations. So it's important that we respond to our residents appropriately. You brought up that our, our cops, there's less cops than we have the same city capacity as other, as other cities that have the same capacity. What do you think is leading to us having less cops on the street? Well, that's, there's a couple of factors to that. So uh, one is that just uh, by sheer you know, design and allocation as it relates to the budget, we have a, a lower allocated amount mm -hmm. than most cities our size. So we have an allocated amount of 485 officers uh, for the city of Stockton, where uh, other cities like maybe Cincinnati might have 12 to 1,300 officers, mm -hmm. right? And they're smaller than Stockton oh, in population. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. But then you ha we have to understand, too, we're dealing with uh, a nationwide shortage with public mm -hmm. safety personnel as well. And so that's another factor uh, that reduces the amount of officers that we, active officers that we have right now. We're short right around 100 officers for the city of Stockton, where we're allocated about 485. What do you think uh, we can do to get cops into those positions? Well, it's important that, you know, we, one, promote the opportunity um, because there's a new generation that has come up now. Um, and there's a lot of vacancies uh, in public safety across the board uh, throughout the nation. And so what young people, young adults have to see is they have to see an opportunity mm -hmm. to be a part of the change. Uh, because they're the, the ones, the individuals that step into this field right now over the next five years, they're going to be the ones that are going to really change the dynamic um, in how their community uh, sees them uh, for the next 15 to 25 years, yeah. right? I mean, this, this is a pivotal moment that we're in right now uh, as a community. And so city of Stockton, we, I mean, we have a new police chief. Uh, he came in uh, June of 2022. 
um, the 50th police chief of Stockton, the first black police chief of Stockton um, in the most diverse city uh, in America. So what's important is that we have a law enforcement uh, department that you know is representative of the community that they're sworn to protect and serve and not only representative but uh, from this community and so we have a huge push and strategy you know that our chief of police um, is leading the way with to to recruit uh, future law enforcement mm -hmm. personnel from Stockton I mean uh, he's everywhere. He's in the high schools. Our chief is in the high schools. Our chief is in the middle schools. Uh, he's in our education system. He was just at UOP not too long ago. I'm sure if he hasn't been to Delta, he'll be can at Delta we, Can soon. we bring him here? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, chief, if you're listening, if you haven't come, you need to come to Delta. Yeah, yeah. But that's what it's all about. It's about being engaged with, with the community mm -hmm. and helping to build that, that trust. Yeah. Is there any incentive that they should – that you think that they should give out so there's more police coming in? Because this is, there's a lot of people that are on the verge of being going, living paycheck to paycheck. So mm -hmm. is there any incentive, like a bonus to There's an incentive right now mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. if you're a qualified candidate and we hire you, we'll send you to the academy. You're going to get paid a salary while you're in the academy before you even graduate. Okay. And then and then when you graduate, um, then there'll be an adjustment and increase to your salary because you'll be a sworn officer mm -hmm. at oh, that see. point. Right. So there's very, there's a lot of innovative approaches that we're taking. In addition to that, listen, I said we're down 100 off 100 officers. Uh, if 100 officers were qualified tomorrow and available for us to hire, we would do it. So it's not a matter of, of not being able to afford it. It's just a matter of doing whatever we can to recruit new officers, but also, uh, just as important, retain the officers that we have. Is there any way you can up their pay? Because if they go to the Bay Area and I come from Stockton and I go to the Bay Area, I'm going to get paid more. It's, yeah, it's very competitive. Right. right. So I will go to the – I said I would just drive to the Bay Area instead of working in Stockton. It's very competitive yeah. uh, across the board, and that's why in, in 2022 – uh, we made the decision uh, through our last collective bargaining agreement with the Police Office Association uh, to increase mm -hmm. uh, wages upwards of 18 uh, percent over a three year period. And so uh, we, we're investing in that space uh, as well. Is there anywhere else you would want to see like the budget go towards public safety, like um, start with ch young children of giving money into them and so they're not in the streets, basically? Is there any way we can allocate more money to them, to the young? Yeah, I know. Basically like programs, right? Yeah, like, programs sure. to get them out the street. I mean, we've been talking a lot about law enforcement, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and a lot about, um, you know, recruiting more and funding them. Uh, but what's just as important are the community-based programs, mm -hmm. policies that we put in place and initiatives that are going to uh, mitigate and prevent crime from happening in the future by making those investments into the into into communities um, and into youth and young adults. It's it's absolutely absolutely critical um, that for us to do that. Yeah. So so there's a couple of ways we do. One is we you know there are a few different tax measures that we have. One in particular that's that are all currently in place. But one in particular is a strong communities tax measure that focuses on. Uh, libraries and recreation uh, for, for youth as well and, and different various activities. Um, we have community um, development uh, block grants that are available uh, throughout the year for nonprofit organizations that uh, uh, focus on public safety um, and, and youth uh, development. Uh, we, we pour a lot of resources uh, in, in those space. I'll tell you. <laughs> Just not to knock the youth to, of today, but they are not the same as they were back then, right? And I and I and I say that to say it is 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 that the youth, you know, today, you know, do, how the way things are in, in this day and age, you know, it, it just seems like the first instinct, right, is 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 not to just talk, of, you it's know, violence. It's, it's violence, mm -hmm. you know, and and. Yes, we need our cops on the streets. We need law enforcement on the streets, right? But we also need programs 
that can mentor, that can nurture, right? Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of trauma. We talked about trauma earlier, Trauma right? and the parents yeah. are not at home because they're working so many hours. Are so they don't... Working or split split family or yeah. anything. Kids you know? are really taking care of themselves yeah. doing... And what so, is it? Lock yeah, key? kids are hurt these yeah. days. Yeah, so they feel like their parents don't worry about them and all yeah. that. Yeah. So is there any program? Like, you said, you said programs, but... I'm thinking more of sports. Like thinking of youth, they would rather be in sports, dance, all that stuff. Everybody want to be a rapper, or a rapper. Like <laughs> even a studio at the library. Even putting a studio at the library, so they become podcasters, mm-hmm. having teachers there. I think that would be a good, good thing in Stockton. The beautiful thing about Stockton is that there's a lot of talent yes. that mm-hmm. comes from Stockton. Um, rappers, Haiti poets, babies, athletes, Brandon Leakes. Right. I mean, there's a there's a lot of talent that comes from Stockton and a lot of that talent that's from Stockton is reinvesting back in Stockton and reinvesting in the youth of Mm -hmm. our community, because Stockton is a young, you know, we're a young city. I I say this frequently. The average age of a Stocktonian uh, is 39 years old. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Over half of our city is under the age of 35 and 30% of our community is under the age of 18. So not only are we young, but we're gonna be young for a while. So it's incumbent upon all of us as a community to invest in that next generation, do everything we can, so that we can expose them to opportunities. Because a lot of times you don't know what you, you don't know. Yeah. Especially, you know, and oftentimes we're a product of our environment until somebody comes into our space and, and mentors us um, or, or shows us another way. Right. Yeah, I can't be what I've never seen. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. How is public safety on campus schools, um, like high schools and middle schools and all that? How is that public safety going? So each school district uh, is, in Stockton um, is supported by four different school districts. You have Manteca Unified, mm-hmm. Lincoln Unified, Stockton Unified, and Lodi Unified that serves the students of, of, of our city. They all have primary responsibility for um, jurisdictional responsibility for public safety for their, their districts. What the city of Stockton does is we've made it a, a, a council legislative, you know, a priority for us to work with our um, educational partners. And so what we do is uh, we contract certain um, school resource officers mm-hmm. at some schools. Now, Stockton Unified School District has their own sworn officers, their own department of public safety. But it's important that um, our chiefs, all the chiefs uh, for the school districts, um, even Delta College has their own chief and UOP has their own chief, that uh, they work together and and they do work together. Just one thing about um, the city of Stockton is is that there's a lot of collaboration. Mm -hmm. With the, there was a stabbing here at the high school at Stag. A young teenager was stabbed to death. Is there, was there any change in how the, how the police police that area or any area in Stockton? Or policy changes? Yeah, that came out from that. There were some uh, internal SUSD policy changes that that took place. I can't speak to yeah. those policy right. changes, but but yeah, there were there were changes there. Yeah, because that's I mean you know because like. It's a school, right? So, you know, we're, we're on a school campus, and we are here to... We're supposed to feel safe. Feel safe. We're here to, you know, get, get education, right? And the last thing we need is to f- to fear going to school, going to the, in, in these leaving. classrooms. Yeah. You know, and, and a kid should never have to, you know, go to school thinking, will I make it, <laughs> will I make it out home. of, you know, at 3 o'clock? It might still going to be alive, you know? Right. I mean, that's, the, like, the last thing we, we should be thinking about. So it's like, you know, um, so I do think that, you know, there there needs to be, you know, some type of presence, right? And for those who, who may be a, a critic of that, like, we shouldn't have, you know, police in our schools. This is an education, e- educational um, environment, right? Like, like, like. What would you say? You know, if 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 you can speak to that, right? Like, you know, is that um, what was the question for the critics? Like saying, like, oh, we shouldn't have police on on school. Oh, grounds. police on campus. Yeah, a lot of people say know? police shouldn't be on campus. Yeah, but then 
something like 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 what happened at Stag, that's a tragedy, right? Is there anything you would say to the people saying that we shouldn't have police on campus? It's important as a community to recognize and understand that when we have law enforcement and security on campus, uh, it's to protect and to serve our students. Um, it's to put the students first. Um, and in addition to that, I know, personally know, several school resource officers um, and security personnel at schools that they're just not there policing. They're there building relationships right. with these students. They're there participating in activities with these students. They're there investing their life into the students while they're protecting the life of those students. And there's nothing more, you know, that as a parent, just what you said, Troy, a little bit earlier, um, you know, you put on the, the parent hat, right? And, and when my kids were younger, when my wife and I would drop our students off at, at elementary school or middle school, um, I didn't even think about something bad happening to them, right? right? I didn't want to think about, about that. But for me as a parent, knowing that there's security and, and public safety and, and law enforcement presence there, I have, a, I have peace of mind. It gives me, it gives me peace of mind. Hmm. Well said. And we are back from commercial. <laughs> Come on, from the commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so recently Stockton had made it nationwide with uh, the serial killer. Um, the ser serial killings that had happened. Is there what? No. Tell me about how the community came together to bring the suspect to justice. Yeah. Because the community came together to identify the man in the picture. Absolutely. What the city of Stockton uh, was able to, to do at the end of last year in the apprehension of uh, the suspected kill serial killer uh, was nothing short of miraculous. Um, these types of cases don't typically get solved in weeks and months. Uh, it takes years and, and, and decades. And that speaks to the collaboration of uh, multiple law enforcement agencies, um, but more importantly, uh, what ultimately led to, to the arrest and apprehension of the suspect was the information that the community provided. Um, I said our police chief, you know, he came in in June of last year. Uh, he was put to the test and put to work uh, Almost right immediately. Away. Almost right. immediately. He absolutely. didn't get a pause. Yeah. Not at all. Not at all. There was no honeymoon period right. for, for him. Um, but what made the difference was that the fact when he came in uh, to the city of Stockton, uh, he came in building relationships with the community right away. He came in as a chief that, uh, for everyone in Stockton. Um, and, and that made the difference because when there was the call to action for the public, they stepped up because that, that rapport and that trust was being built there. Um, and, and that's what I talk about the residents of Stockton taking ownership from a public safety standpoint. If you see something, it's important, again, to, to, to say something. You can report it, call 911, our non-emergency line, uh, Stockton Crime Stoppers. Um, you could submit an Ask Stockton um, ticket, uh, work order uh, through the app. But there's several different methods. But the key is, if you have information, put it out there. Listen, Stockton, one of the beautiful things about Stockton is the interconnectedness of it of our community. We've experienced a lot of growth in our city over the last three, four decades. That might seem like a long time, but it really isn't. We've experienced a lot of population growth. What that means is that, that there's still a lot of generations that are here that, that are connected. So how does that tie to public safety and what we're talking about right now? Because of the interconnectedness of Stockton, if somebody has committed a crime in this city, somebody else knows about it. Somebody else has some information. So don't let your voice uh, be silent because together we're going to change the narrative of our community as it relates to public safety. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my sister was actually a witness to something that was very dangerous in the city and she didn't get any call back from the PD or any anything type of 
I mean, they didn't even call to see, like, what she seen. So I was wondering what she can do to complain about that or ask about that. This is another opportunity for the community uh, to engage our Ask Stockton platform and submit a work order. Um, because what that does is it creates a record mm -hmm. of communication, um, another record of communication, um, which leads to transparency. And that's what we're all about for the city of Stockton is we want to be a transparent uh, government, uh, good, bad, and indifferent. You know, right. if, if, we're, if we're not doing something right, we want to take ownership of, of it and we want to correct it. And there's also uh, an opportunity through Ask Stockton uh, to access the complaint line as well. Uh, for constituents to and residents of Stockton to actually complain about a service experience with the city of Stockton. Right. It's all about uh, transparency, and that's what we're committed to. Yeah, because it was so bad. My parents actually went up to BD because <laughs> they didn't want anything happening to her because yeah. she was a witness. So they actually went up to the police department and was like, y'all going to do something? And Hey, listen, this <laughs> is this is their city. Mm -hmm. This is your parents' city. Mm -hmm. This is your sister's city. This is every one of our cities. Right. And if we don't feel like we're getting a proper response, w there's no issue and no problem with exercising your voice. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's multiple ways to do that. Because you're the ones, you know, everybody in this city, we all pay our taxes. <coughs> right. OK. We all expect a certain level of, uh, of service mm -hmm. um, as an elected official uh, when you. Uh, when you hired, when the city as a whole hired me to be their mayor by voting, you know, mm -hmm. by voting for me, whether you actually cast a ballot for me or not, as an elected official, I don't get to pick and choose who I serve. Right. I'm the mayor for 322 plus thousand people, and I have to represent in every single one of them. That that that's what it's all about. We have a city staff of upwards of 1,700 employees throughout the city. We, we have to serve everyone in this community and do the best we can to improve the quality of life for everyone. Is Ask Stockton the only app that they can go to to make a complaint? Get that away from the mic. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> is Ask Stockton the only app they can go to make a complaint, or is there another app they can, they can go to, like the neighbor app? or Ask Stockton, Ask Stockton is, the is the only is the main city, one? city app. Okay. And then there are phone lines, uh, phone numbers to file complaints or to report complaints right. as well. I want to I wanna say something about that too, right? Um, so we, Stockton is very diverse. There are, there's many people here come from many backgrounds, many culture, cultures, right? And so like for, for those who want to say something, who want to call, but a may not know barrier. the language, yeah, language right? Barrier. So language can become become a barrier, you know, when reporting crime or when reporting, you know, potholes or or they need their yard, you know, some fix the lights are out or something like that, right? Um, what measures or what 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 is set up for folks, if any, you know, to be able to make those type of calls, make reports, or do you? Like who, or is, who there a to? is there different languages on Ask Stockton? It's not even just Ask Stockton. You know, like it's even not even just the app, right? But more as a community as a whole, mm -hmm. where you know, you know, language is a barrier. Cultural differences, right? Right, is a barrier, right? And even for those who are maybe just afraid of their neighbor, to, not just, their neighbor. just afraid of you know interaction with law enforcement, oh, that, yeah. right? Um, is there any measures? In place that can you know um, that that folks can safely report, and also not just safely report, but also like do so in a, 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 that can meet that person's need, like culturally. If that makes sense, it does. It does. So any any of the platforms that we have available for residents to make a report, file a complaint. Um, it's important that, that they do that because they're all safe. They're, they're all safe. What we recognize more recently is that upwards of 46% of the residents of Stockton, uh, English is actually the second language. And so where we do have, uh, through our reporting methods, uh, we do have uh, 
translation services or, or it available in different languages, we're constantly imp- focused on improving that experience. So that's, that's a constant. That's a constant because we are the number one most culturally diverse city uh, in, in the nation. So we should be leading the nation um, when it comes to innovation and, 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 and bridging those gaps from a language barrier standpoint. Would you know if the cops have uh, certain cops that go out when there is, like, let's say someone calls in a Spanish, do they put somebody out there that knows Spanish and knows that culture? Or is just whoever answers? Would you know that? Our law enforcement has um, the resources available to be able to communicate uh, with different different residents. Yeah. You got your answer? Yes. Your answer? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. How can we report anonymous, anonymously if we don't feel like we're safe reporting something that we witness? So being able to report anonymously is always an option for the community, whether it's through our Ask Stockton app um, or it's calling Stockton Crime Stoppers. That's always uh, an option. We want to make sure that um, the public feels safe um, that they feel uh, protected, um, and we want to do that in, in as many ways as we possibly mm-hmm. can, and providing those anonymous options is one of the ways that we accomplish that. That sounds good. Yeah. I feel like we should utilize those more and tell people more about those because there's some some stuff that people see that don't report it because they know the person, and they don't want to feel like they're going to get hurt or injured because that person is going to come back and attack them so i think so yeah i think even even being able to like report something anonymously right and 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 a lot of the youngsters out there these days or or not even youngsters just as a whole the community some community i'm not gonna say all the community right like you know you i think you've uh have you heard of the term um or the phrase snitches get stitches yeah right and so how can we how can we destigmatize in our community, you know, the, uh, um, especially when it comes to like public safety, you know, how can we de- we de- destigmatize, you know, reporting, right? Um, in in a way that you know is the one yes, uh, anonymously, you know, uh, uh, protect somebody, but also for the person, just as a com- community members itself. Destigmatizing the whole yeah we all re- reporting yeah yeah I, but I honestly think that's like community based too though yeah because I feel like the community should protect the person that is telling what happened but that's but that's not happening though right you know so, so how, how do we do yeah, that yeah, how do we do that right? <laughs> yeah how do we yeah how do you said the key word Troy and that's destigmatize we have to destigmatize and a lot of that stigma sometimes is a result of the culture that we find our, ourselves in. And um, I'm in, I interact with a lot of students and young adults uh, throughout the city of Stockton on a regular basis, um, especially in our education system. And when we talk about public safety, my message to them is, is listen, it's, it's not about being a snitch. When you, when you report something, if you have information, um, it's not about being a snitch. What you're doing is you're protecting not only your life, the lives of those that are around you, but more importantly, you're protecting the life too of that individual who may have perpetrated that crime um, and ultimately preventing them from committing another crime, possibly, and uh, preventing future victims Uh, of those crimes. So it's bigger than being a snitch. Um, We just need to wipe that out of our minds. (laughs) We have to reclaim the word snitch. That's right. (laughs) Reclaim it and just take narrative. Oh, I do every day. I'm like, don't tell me nothing because I'm a snitch. I know about you. I know about you. (laughs) (laughs) I talk about, I I often talk about the community taking ownership. Yeah. It's important for our young people, students, young adults, to learn how to take ownership and teach them the right way to take ownership because they're the ones that 
uh, are going to determine what our community looks like, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 plus, mm -hmm. 20 plus years from now. And I can't ask somebody to take ownership if I don't empower them with certain information um, in the tools, the resource, in the pathway to take that ownership. And that's what we're talking about right here. And I think that's what's so powerful about this D Media 2NI Talk conversation on public safety is because when we're talking about the hard issues um, of our community, we're also talking about real empowering solutions that give our residents and those who are listening to this podcast, podcast a complete paradigm shift in a, a new way of viewing public safety in their community. And that was 209 Talks. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been a pleasure, <laughs> Nicole and, and yeah. Troy. No, glad Looking to forward to doing it again. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And you gotta tell them about the Spider Man effect too. The so, Peter Parker. Peter Parker saw something and then he didn't say nothing and then they came back and killed his uncle. That's what happened to Spider Man. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you nerd. You gotta tell young you adults nerd. that. The Spider Man effect. <laughs> oh. 209 Talk has been a production of KWDC 93.5 LPFM, Delta College Radio. This program is made possible by listeners like you. Programming is produced by the students, staff, and faculty of San Joaquin Delta College's Digital Media Department. It is supported by the Delta College Department of Arts, Humanities, and Multimedia, the Career Technical Education and Workforce Development Office, and the State of California. This is a collaboration with the City of Stockton Mayor's Office. Thank you for listening.